Hey guys, let's talk about tonight's episode of The Flash. And I was really anticipating this episode because I wanted to know where we were going to pick up. How are we going to continue moving forwards after last week's pretty awesome episode with Barry reversing time? So we pick up right where we left off. He's reversed time and he's um, pretty much not understanding what's going on. And he's realizing that he's live, reliving ep- moments that happened the day before. And when he gets to Star's lab, he's realizing he's finishing um, people's sentences. And it's just, it's very obvious that he knows exactly what they're going to say and he's repeating it, but he doesn't realize that he's repeating it until it actually comes out. So it's kind of funny. And then Dr. Wells calls him into the room and he's pretty much like, you um, <clears throat> did something to the time equilibrium, basically, or something like that. And you've you reverse time and Barry's re- revealing that yes, he's experienced this day um, before and it was just yesterday's day and <clears throat> um, pretty much um, Dr. Wells is telling him, you cannot alter anything. Any slight change, any deviation in the way that yesterday went will could be catastrophic. And of course Barry's like, yeah, sure. But what does he do? <laughs> I mean, how can you blame him? Because he realizes there's a bunch of bad things that are going to happen, right? So he sees, like, the the police chief um, getting uh, hit by lightning. He knows that Joe is going to be kidnapped and something bad is going to happen to him. So, of course, he doesn't want any of those things to happen. So he right away goes and kidnaps um, Mark Martin. And he locks him up in this, the Star's Lab jail, so to speak, right? So immediately he alters the he alters the time he alters that day like tremendously. So then we cut to um, a robbery, not really a robbery, but um, we see these uh, sort of like mob bosses getting attacked. And who was it? Snark, <laughs> Leonard Snark, and his boy. Um, and it's actually you know really refreshing to see him again because. He's a fun character. I like how campy he is. I like how he plays snark, snart. And I like that um, he's sort of like a threat, but not a threat. You know what I mean? So, of course, we know that Cisco stole their guns the last time around. So, snart kidnaps his brother, uh, his meaning Cisco's brother, who Cisco's not very fond of. And we come to realize later on in the episode that his brother was actually really jealous of Cisco all of his life because Cisco has knows what he wants, he's he's driven, he's gone after what he wants, and his brother's really not done anything with his life. And um, he's always been jealous of him, and and, and um, his brother's high school girlfriend actually had a crush on Cisco, which I thought was quite hilarious. Um, so of course we have Lisa, who is Snart's sister, and she was one of the main characters on The Tomorrow People, which got canceled on The CW. But I, I like that, or I'm seeing that, you know, we're getting some spillover from that show into this show, which is kind of cool. That was a show that I enjoyed, but unfortunately did not get picked up for a second season. So she has now landed as Snart's sister, and I liked her character. She flirted with Cisco, but then ultimately betrayed um, Cisco and said, oh, yes, I'm, I'm Snart's sister, and then had Cisco make a, a gun for her, and it was like a gold gun. So we've got like the, the heat gun, the cold gu- gun, and now we've got the gold gun. <laughs> so when she would shoot it, people would turn to gold, and it was, you know, it was cute. So, um, of course, you know, Cisco getting kidnapped by Snart and his, his, his people was so that he could ultimately rebuild these guns for them and um, he would let them go. And he kidnapped and held um, Cisco's brother um, as, I guess, for collateral damage or, or for ransom kind of thing. And ultimately they got away, which is great. But it showed that Cisco really does love his brother and his brother really does love him. And the only way that he was going to be freed was if they told, if Cisco told um, Snart the the true identity of the Flash. So of course now Snart knows that Barry Allen is the Flash and I like that end scene between the two of them. Again, very campy and he, Snart basically says, I won't reveal your identity if you just let me go about my business. And Barry says, sure, as long as you don't kill anybody, you can go and do your stuff. Like, 
starts like, I don't want to leave Central City because I like it. I like it here. This is my family. This is my home. Blah, blah, blah. It's all very campy, but it, the scene plays out really, really nicely. I like it. And um, uh, Barry says, if you go n anywhere near my family, my friends, I will take you down. And then they pretty much call a truce and um, Barry speeds off and leaves Snart in the in the wilderness somewhere. So good scene between the two of them. I like the introduction of Lisa, his sister, and uh, I think that they'll continue to be some good um, nemesis and villains moving forwards throughout the series because they didn't get locked up, which is good, even though Mark Martin is marked, is locked up, my boy from Spartacus. Um, but I like that, you know, we still got a glimpse of him at the very beginning. And he was like, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to basically create a tidal wave and bury this city. But obviously, Barry has stopped that from happening. So with Barry altering the present technically the past because it happened already he's obviously highly anticipating <laughs> i just knew this was going to be a disaster i knew it he is highly anticipating uh, iris confessing her feelings to him so he breaks up with linda he wants to have a lunch or a coffee date with iris so that she can get whatever feelings she has off of her chest and of course it is an epic fail. So <laughs> Iris is like, I don't know what you're talking about, Barry. I just like you as a friend. I'm with, I'm with, um, what's her name? I don't even remember. Uh, with her boyfriend and she's happy and she doesn't want to leave him. And, you know, what are you talking about? And it's all very, once again, Barry getting the pie in his face. And um, even Eddie then goes and punches um, Barry in the face because he, he iris obviously tells him what happened and we all realize that all of the events leading up to why she told barry she loves him aren't there anymore so the fact that her father was kidnapped the fact that you know she then is f facing imminent death with this tsunami coming at them she reveals her ultimate true feelings for barry but she's not feeling those feelings right now because none of that is happening because Mark has been locked up thanks to Barry. So with him changing everything, it has ultimately changed how she has internalized her feelings for Barry. So once again, Barry is left in the dust without the love of his life. And then that end scene when um, Eddie and Iris are like, oh, we didn't realize that these are side effects from, you know, you being hit by lightning was really weak. Like, come on. We could do better. I'm sorry, guys. You know that I am a fan of good pairings. And I think that Iris and Barry could make a good pairing. But they are just writing her so terribly. So terribly. And just, like, the way that she they played out that last scene, like, with Eddie running over and giving him a hug and being like, oh, we didn't... Oh, stop. Just stop. Like, it's just so bad. Like, ugh. I'm not feeling it at all. So... Either you keep Iris away from from Barry for the rest of the season and just leave them alone and let her be with Eddie and, and at least let us either care about Eddie or not. Get, make it very decisive, okay? I'm tired of this three-way sort of triangle that just is terrible right now. So it just needs to stop. Um, and of course, Joe is running around in this episode going, Barry, like, what's going on with you? Because he obviously realizes that he was um, revealing information about the the murder of the the forensics um, guy from the lab at the very beginning without really seeing anything on him. So Joe knows that something's up and he can't quite put his finger on it because Barry's not telling him that he was reverse time. And of course, he doesn't want to reveal that to anybody. But, you know, Barry's feeling in the crapper because all the things that he was pretty much warned by Dr. Wells is happening. Iris isn't like giving his or revealing her true feelings. Cisco's got kidnapped. You know, all these things are going in the opposite direction of what he really wanted, how he really wanted the day to go. So I thought that was really funny. Um, so of course now we know that Barry um, from last week's episode confronted um, um, Iris's 
not boss, but co-worker, about the story that he's writing about Dr. Wells. And he again confronts him in this week's episode, and he says, you know, I know that you think Dr. Wells is, or you think you have a story on Dr. Wells, but it's wrong. And then he walks away. And at the end of the episode, we see that the reverse Flash goes and attacks, um, I think his name was Mort. Morgan or something like that um, attacks Iris's co-worker and steals the flash drive with all the information about who they, he believes that um, Dr. Wells is and the fact that he believes that he killed Simon Stagg and he then ultimately kills um, her co-worker and then of course you know m- removes everything from the uh, like where they where he works so no one's gonna know I guess or they'll just realize he's missing but they don't necessarily know that he's dead so then um of course Barry sees this on the news that he's gone missing and he starts to kind of put two and two together and at the end we see him talk to Joe and say I think you were right about Dr. Wells and then Joe's like about which which part because he's obviously suspicious about a lot of things um but he says all of it so It'll be interesting now with with Barry reversing time. We, he obviously knows that Cisco doesn't die at the hands of Doctor Wells, and he's now suspicious of Doctor Wells in. Is it present time or past present time? You know what I mean. So this day has already happened, um, and what's going to happen? Like, will can he reverse it again? And like Doctor Wells says, he might reverse it this time for a day, but he could reverse it and be centuries away. So. It'll be very interesting to see what happens the next time if Barry's emotions and everything get the best of him and he runs off super fast and he's able to change time once again. And he even has that conversation with Dr. Wells, like, I want to reverse time to save my mom. Should I not do that? And, you know, it's a very interesting and complex thing. He's like, will saving your mom create more death if you go back and do that? Like, if you try to alter that, will you end up killing more people? Very honest and interesting question to ask because yeah obviously we saw what today brought which is it brought snark and his sister and all this other stuff and kidnapped cisco and you know iris is completely not feeling the way she was before so what could possibly happen if he goes back and tries to change the future with or the past with his mother only time will tell. Okay, so okay, guys, that's it for me. Let me know what you thought of this week's episode. I did enjoy it. I thought it was a, another strong episode. I think they're really doing a really good job with this series right now. It's campy at times. It's serious at times. It's got some good drama. Um, you know, I definitely think the one weakest link is Iris and all of that storyline. Her and Eddie just, you know, write her better because they're writing her terribly right now. And... Okay, guys, that's it for me. I'll see you next week.